Today I'm covering the 5 bitchy books I'm reading in 2020. Hi everyone, this is Casper the Boy Definer here today. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe, it really helps me out. To not trail too long, I'm planning a lot of things for my 2020 and some of the things I'm trying to gather is a book list. I have a lot of books that I've amassed over time and these are the top 5 books that I want to read uh, in 2020 uh, relating to witchcraft, magic and other things like that. I also have a few um, honorable mentions which I'll get into at the end of the video. So the first book that I want to read is something I bought, something I couldn't find on Amazon, Amazon Kindle copy. So I bought a physical one and it's called Ideal Suggestions. Essays in Divinatory Poetics, Poetics um, by Sela Sederstrom. So it's a beautiful book. I really like the art outside. And reading it, so far, I've only got, gotten through the first few pages and it's been pretty interesting. I thought this book would be more uh, of a guide to divination, like a freestyle, intuitive guide. If you watch my channel, you know that I have a kind of a wall of resistance against intuitive readings, just because I don't think I can do them really well. And I thought this book could help me break through that. But flipping through the book, it is, it's, it feels like just random essays or random paragraphs uh, that loosely ties in with divination. I don't know, I, I'm looking forward to reading this book because I, I appreciate writing and I thought this book was also about writing plus uh, divination based on what I've seen and I heard a lot of good things about how beautiful the writing is and just waiting to see if it really affects or helps my understanding of divination. I'm putting the links of the books I mentioned today down in the description box below in case you want to check them out. The next book I wanted to talk about is Pieces of Eight by Gordon, uh, Gordon White. I'm a fan of Gordon White, I'm a fan of his uh, podcast even though I, when I listen to it sometimes I just drift away. I really enjoyed his Chaos Protocols, I did a quick talk about it if you want to check it out. I have not gotten to this book called Pieces of Eight that he has written. He also written a, another one called Starships. But I wanted something more practical for witchcraft and I thought Pieces of Eight would be it. I've also started it but I couldn't comp couldn't move forwards because it felt really it felt really esoteric. It felt really tough to get through. At the same time I'm I have no doubt that it's gonna help add to my practice. So I, I'm gonna try to power through this in 2020, hopefully at the big in the first half of the year. You know when I say five books to read in 2020, I'm hoping it's for H1 for the first half and I could plan the rest later. But this, these are my top priorities of books I'm going to read for witchy stuff. So the pieces of eight is about chaos, magic essays, and enchantments. So I think it's going to really cover quite um, deep concepts in chaos magic, which is what Gordon White is known, known most for. And I can't wait to really assimilate that into my practice or really build up my practice with these principles. The third book I wanted to talk about is Ancestral Medicine. Ancestral Medicine is by Daniel Four, and I heard it's a really good agnostic book about venerating your ancestors uh, and trying to learn how to work with your ancestors and heal your you know the wounds from your ancestral wounds i'm really looking forward to reading that most of my ancestor veneration or work only happens in april during Qingling Jie with my grandmother and my relatives where we go to the tombs or the uh where where the urns are of of our ancestor ashes maybe her parents her, her grandparents and we make offerings to them. That's like the limit of my ancestral veneration and I'm hoping this book will help me deepen my practice of that. At the same time, because it's written by someone white, I'm also hoping it would be agnostic enough to be able to be applied to my Asian culture. So I'm excited to read this book. I'm ex excited to expand my, my knowledge uh, and my work with my ancestors. And this book hopefully with a key to that. The next book I want to read is called Spirit Allies and it's I think it's a prolific book. It's by Christopher Panzak. And Christopher Panzak, I think everyone has heard his name. Once, you know, the first person you read is Christopher Panzak when you step into the world of the esoteric or magic. He's one of the most prolific writers. I think he writes for Llewellyn and he has many, many, many books out there. I tried reading some of his books and I don't really super gel with them. But I'm excited to read this one because I feel like it might be quite an agnostic view about um, your allies. I, I grabbed this word allies from Six Ways by um, Aidan Walker. And because this book also mentions spirit allies, I'm excited to see if this book deepens my 
my that relationship with my spirit allies. I don't. I can't say that I have a very strong relationship with them now. When I when I feel like it, I give them offerings. When I feel like it, I ask them for favors if possible. I thank them, but I don't do it on like a daily basis. I don't do it on a weekly basis. And I'm hoping this book will give me more steps or more guidelines on how I can deepen my relationship with my allies.、Uh, maybe even identify who my allies are because sometimes you know talking to allies and not knowing their identity can be a bit scary at times. Although you know I I do. You know, have this image of Green Tara behind me, Liu Tumu, and you know I also always worship、um, Guan Yin and, and Ami Tuo Fu,、um, and other deities like Ganesha,、uh, Apollo. But I just want to see if there's a way、um, that this book really deepens and helps me with my relationship with these deities or these allies.、Um, who knows? It it may. I I I have no idea what the the book is gonna cover. So I I just hope maybe it can even cover a bit of the ancestral work. Maybe it all ties in together. The next book I want to mention is a bit less witchy than the rest of them. It has less to do with spells, but it is Astrology for Real Life by Th- Theresa Reed. So I'm hoping this book will give me a good primer into astrology. Of course, I know some of the basics. I know the planets. I know the signs. I know roughly what the signs mean. I know that there's cardinal, fixed, mutable. These are basically what I know about astrology. I'm just hoping I can apply it deeper because I'm hoping to get into the Thoth more. I'm hoping that it can teach me about the thirty-six decans just a bit more. I also have Benabel Wen's astrology course for the past two years, and I have not gotten deep enough to it. I have gotten to a point where you know you can see the shapes of the the birth chart, but the difference between whole signs and placidus, you know, everything was stated up front. It really confused me. So I'm hoping reading Theresa Reed's book first, getting to know astrology on a higher level. Then diving in into、uh, Benabel Wen's astrology course, I'm hoping that would help me more, and in getting a a bigger sense of what astrology is. Of course, on top of all this, I'm still learning my own um is Chinese astrology work.、Uh, I'm taking some courses next year, hopefully to help me with that. So all this, I'm hoping will just you know help me in my path、uh, to learning more about the world and magic. Okay, and now I have a few honorable mentions I want to talk about. Why I call them honorable mentions? They are not like high priority reads. If I do have other books I want to read, I'm gonna do them first. But the first one I want to talk about is Folk Witchcraft: A Guide to Lore, Land, and Familiar Spirit for the Solitary Practitioner. And this is by Roger J. Horn. So when I when books kind of reference the seasons and things like that, I don't. Tend to put them on the top of my list just because I live in Singapore where we don't have any seasons, and I honestly don't know how people with seasons live. I I I want to experience it someday, sometime, but right now I I can't really understand that. So reading books about you know experiencing winter um with the wheel of the year, I I don't really resonate super a lot with books like that. And this book does mention seasons, but I'm hoping I feel like this book also talks about. The law in the land, and that also always scares me because most of the time when it's written by someone who lives in America or in the UK, the plants and everything I don't resonate with that so much. I don't see the plants anywhere in Singapore, especially because Singapore we are such an urban society. A lot of our plants are very carefully managed. You can't just pluck things; you can get fined, and the fines are heavy. I am putting this lower on the list, but I wanted to mention it to you guys because it may be very applicable to what you guys are hoping to do in twenty、uh, twenty. The next two books I want to talk about is by Devin Hunter. It they are the、uh, the Witch's Book of Spirits and the Witch's Book of Mysteries. I like Devin Hunter. I find him enjoyable to read.、Um, I have his first book, Devin Hunter, the Witch's Book of Power, but most of this book was. Was relating to astrology, so it was really hard to get.、Um, I also don't super enjoy some of the rituals here. I find them a bit、uh, difficult to follow.、Uh, he also has a very specific kind of、uh, tradition he follows. I can't exactly recall what it is right now. There's the star goddess. There's Diana. I think Diana is the one that he follows. I prefer witchcraft books that are more agnostic and more free for us to interpret and use the rituals in however sense we prefer to. Like six ways, like even Tao of Craft, you know they are more flexible. I do have hope for his other two books because I'm I'm really hoping to get more into spirit work this year, and、uh, the Witch's Book of Spirit seemed like a really good one. As for the Mysteries book, it's just you know the word Mysteries just draws draws me in. Like what can it be? What is it about? I I don't know, and I want to find out. 
if you guys are reading any witchy books for 2020, any ones that um, you know, seem important to you, seem that like they will add to your craft, please comment below and let me know. I'm still building my book list for 2020, so it's really very helpful to hear from you guys. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the like and subscribe again if you enjoyed it. Uh, comment, let me know how you feel about this video. And if there's nothing else, I'll see you again soon. You guys have a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye.